Our Attorney General, Nicola Roxon, says that this time Alan Jones has gone a step too far. And certainly his remark that Julia Gillard's father died be shame because of his daughter's lies has provoked more than the usual suspects to come to the fore. The public outroar, in fact, has been so loud that not only the, the listeners, but many of his sponsors are deserting the parrot. And that means, of course, that the station itself is taking a good look at it. But they say Alan Jones has survived this sort of catastrophe before. He's got through various brushes with the broadcasting authorities, including the one about cash for comment, taking secret commissions, otherwise known as bribes, for endorsing products, which should have got him put off air. So, there is Alan Jones. He seems to think that he is immortal, and that things like telling the truth don't really worry people. Well, why would they? I mean, it's not that Alan Jones tells the truth. Whatever he says becomes the truth. The man is omnipotent, infallible, invincible, invulnerable. Or is he? This time it may be just a little bit different. In the past, Alan Jones has got away with his ranting about Muslims, about climate change, about Greens, about anything to the left of the soup spoon, simply because that such ranting appeals to his demographic. Alan Jones' audience is mainly confined to the Sydney Basin and the outer suburbs of Sydney, and it's ageing and conservative. And by pandering to its prejudices, Alan Jones has earned this reputation as being an influential commentator. He isn't, of course. He only appeals to those whose votes are already committed, and politicians are beginning to wake up to this. But the important point here is that those ageing Conservatives are just the sort of people who would be outraged about making cracks about a dead father. This is not their territory at all. Muslims, Greens, scientists, lefties, all OK. But not the dead. After all, they're getting perilously close to that stage themselves in the main. So perhaps, just perhaps, this time the parrot has squawked his last. We can but hope that this running embarrassment to the gay community, this object of contempt and derision by his fellow broadcasters, this running sore on the body politic might finally be expunged. All we can do is hope. I'm Mungo McCallum.